So our next presenter uh, is Tim Woodward, and Tim owns Telus um, Agronomics. He's an, he has an agronomic consulting company based in Virginia. Their focus on, is on precision technologies, fertilizer management, and crop scouting. Several years ago, he realized that there was a need for drones, so he started exploring uh, some opportunities for his business. Tim is a graduate of Virginia Tech. With, he has a, a bachelor's and a master's degree in crop and soil, sci and soil environmental science with a focus on soil fertility and plant uh, nutrition. So, Tim, thank you for coming today, and you're wired up. All right, well, thank you for having me. Um, as you said, we're going to uh, demo a drone that I'm currently basically putting together. This is the, the drone system that I use in my consulting business. Um, I saw the, the, the need to, to basically put, to ba uh, put a package together for other people. Um, so this is the drone that I'm going to demo. It's what's called a quadcopter. It has four props. Uh, it's able to stay completely balanced and level. Um, it has autopilot system. So we can easily, through our phone or laptop or tablet, program in some type of mission. And when I say program in, I'm literally talking about with your finger drawing a map around the field and that's it. It's really, really simple to use, easy to use. Um, it has augmented manual modes, meaning that you don't have direct control to the motors. That would be too challenging to fly. Um, so it has a mode that basically if you were to let go of the transmitter, it would just stay put. It would just level at that spot or hover at that at, at that spot. Um, to move it around, very, very simple. You know, left, right on, on, on the sticks, forward and back. It's extremely easy to fly. Um, last guy that I got set up on, on one of these was 75. Uh, he didn't grow up in the video game era and he was flying within about an hour. So they're, they're, they're simple to use, simple to fly. Uh, one thing that we should say, you know, this is, this is not a toy. It is a tool. There's big carbon fiber props on it. They're 15 inches and they will do damage if we're not safe with it. Um, so that's why you see that I have it away from the tent. Um, you will never see me flying over top of people. Um, and I always test my system as much as I possibly can when coming to something like this, just so I know that it's not buggy. Um, this drone is also set up with a three axis gimbal on the front with live feed. So it has a, a GoPro that the gimbal will actually stabilize it. So as this drone is rocking and rolling with the wind, that GoPro is perfectly level. And I'm able to control the pan where it, where it looks and tilt from, 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 from the ground. I can either use dials or I can actually put on a set of goggles which will track the, the head movement and so wherever I look, the camera will look as well. So it's, it's almost like being up there and flying. Um, I'm able to take it up to four, 400 feet, get a view of the field, and drop it right down, on, right, right down onto the canopy level as well. Um, we're able to get up extremely close. Uh, live feed system, it goes out to about five miles. I've never personally taken it out to that, that, that far, um, but it's, it, it's more than what we'll ever really need. Um, so what I've tried to do here, uh, I think it's going to work, but we do have a big tent and a lot of metal around that kind of interferes with the signal just a little bit. Um, and right now the signal is terrible because the an antenna is buried into the ground. So I'm going to fly, fly it around and you should be able to see some live feed from here. Um, and if you would like, you can move out. I, I asked not to go too far out. Uh, if you wanted, to, if if you wanted to see it, see it flying around as well. So, without too much more, I'm gonna send it up. Yeah. Yes, sir. What do you use it for in your consulting? Okay, so the big thing that I use the drone for in my business is uh, scouting for crops, and I also have the ability with this system to put an aerial mapping camera on the back of it and I will actually aerial map uh, our, our trials that we have. We try to do a lot of trials. Um, so what I'm able to do is quantify every treatment every couple weeks. So instead of just waiting until the end of the season and getting the yield map, I'm able to go out there and see how the environment those last couple weeks has affected every single treatment. So it's just 
it's more data. It's more knowledge. So, any other questions? And, and scouting wise, I mean, it's the live feed is great. Essentially, it's just trying to save footsteps. Um, when I first started, I figured, you know, we would never be able to take the boots out of the field. It would just help us target where where we walk to. But we're getting to the point now with this live feed and the ability to, to, to fly this that we don't necessarily have to walk out to the field anymore. We're actually able to see exactly what we need to see essentially from the truck. Uh, so we're able to, to cover quite quite a bit more, more more ground now. So anybody else have any questions? So we, it, it'll it'll come back. Go ahead. That's pretty hard to because when you get, um, she asked if you can see any type of bug damage. Um, it's hard to do because what happens, we'll get so close to the ground that the props will actually blow the leaves down. Um, I'm working on trying to find a solution for, with, with a camera that will zoom in because that would really help with that. Um, but uh, being able to locate and identify weeds, extremely easy. So, but, but bug damage is a, it's a little bit trickier. We can see that there's maybe some leaf loss from up high, but we can't necessarily tell you what kind of leaf loss it is and identify the bug from there. So, anybody else have any questions? We, uh, we consult on approximately 30 to 40,000 acres for variable rate management of P and K. Uh, with the drone, about 10,000 acres, where we will actually take it out and hit, hit, hit fields. But it's more of an as-needed basis. Um, like right now is a perfect time of year to use a drone because beans are this tall. Corn is this tall. It's not easy to walk across a field now. So being able to send the drone out really, really helps. So, any other questions? No? Yes, sir. What's the cost of Very low. Um, you do have to oil the bearings within the motors, and the recommended life of a motor is 60 hours, but the motors are very cheap. They're about $50 each. So there's really a small cost um, for it. Uh, batteries have a, 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 a life cycle as well. It's about, it's between 200 and 1,000 charge cycles, all depending on the type of charging system that you, you have. Uh, if you have a cheap, uh, cheap system, it'll actually diminish the life of those batteries. Um, batteries cost a bit as well. They're about, about $150 for every two with the ones that I, that I have now. There are batteries that are bigger and better that are four times the cost. So, but you can fly maybe an extra 10 or 15 minutes. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you have an 800 acre field or 800 acre farm where you have the ability to not move around that, that truck, you know, that extra 15 minutes would be extremely useful at, 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 at that point. Um, you know, we get about 25 minutes with our batteries now, uh, that bigger battery pushes up to about 40 minutes, so we're able to cover a lot more acreage. Um, but the cost is prohibitive. Uh, it's four times the cost, all of a sudden you're looking at $1,500 in batteries, and that is excessive. So. Uh, there's a lot of work going on with thermal sensors. I mean, thermals, basically the ground's gonna be warmer the less moisture that it has. Um, same with crops. Yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of work there. There's a, a company that I just backed that is, is trying to develop a low, a low cost thermal sensor to put on these drones. Uh, currently we can get a thermal sensor for about four to $6,000. Uh, this company is trying to come under the $1,000 range. So it may be more accessible to most of us once the price drops and we're gonna be able to start running thermal imagery. Um, any other questions? So they can sit in here and watch the live feed or if they wanna That's right. There. If you wanna sit in here and watch the, the, the live feed, I try to set up the uh, projector as good as I could. 
um, but it tends to wash just a little bit. Um, so you can sit in and watch this or you can walk out just a little bit and watch it as well. Uh, what I'll do is probably fly it around essentially. Um, control, I have a, I have a button, uh, which will probably go into the safety aspect of it all. It can detect when the battery is getting low and it'll come back and land itself. It can detect when the transmitter range has been lost. Uh, it'll come back and land itself. Um, I have a switch on the uh, controller at any point. I can hit that, that switch, it'll drop down to 30 meters, come back and land itself. It'll land exactly where it took off from. It's extremely safe. There's also a uh, geo fence as well. Um, the fence is two miles wide and 600 feet tall. So if something were to happen, uh, I lose control of the craft, some type of interference. Um, it's gonna go, it's gonna hit that fence, return to launch is going to kick in, it's gonna come back and land itself. So it's, a, it's, it's very smart. I try to build a lot of redundancies into it um, and really make it hard to crash. You know, 99% of the crashes are human error. Um, I can attest to that because I have probably 99 times the amount of crashes than anybody in this room. But, but it's, uh, it's pretty hard to crash these, but it happens. Um, so, it's, it's, so if you're ever looking at trying to buy one of these, uh, look at the company's support policy. You wanna find, you wanna find a company that really provides really, really good back-end support. Uh, so in the event of a crash, they'll fix it for you, get it back out to you. So, but any other questions? Want me to fly it now? Yeah? yeah? All right. Sounds like Mother Nature is going to give us a little bit of a fit as well. And so to take off, I just give it throttle. I'm going to go up. I'm going to try not to get struck by lightning. So you should be able to, I have it in loiter mode now, it's just gonna stay there. So I can, uh, I can now kind of pan around for y'all, see what you need to see. You can tell it's just extremely, extremely stable. And you can hear it kind of flapping a little bit too. So we'll get it out over top of the water. Let's see how nervous I am. <laughs> and yep. Um, as I said, we're also able to put on a set of goggles and link into here. And wherever we look, the camera will look. So if I want to look down and to the left, the camera's going to look down and to the left. You know, and it gives you the sense that you're there. Um, but you're a half mile away. So you're dropping on to plants, you're going up, you're seeing the whole field, you can pretty much do anything you want at that point. Has anyone tried that with 3D? Excuse me? Has anyone tried that with 3D camera? They, they have, Oculus Rift is coming out, or has uh, come out. It's a, it's a type of headset that does stereoscopic 3D views and it'll actually track your movement. It's actually developed for, for uh, video games, but people have tried putting a couple GoPros on it. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know if it's a novelty or whether it would help. I'm not quite sure. So, and then when I'm ready to land, I just hit the switch. So it's going to go up to 30 meters, it's going to come back, and it's going to drop down and land itself. Excuse me? The screen, like the live feed? Oh, it's actually uh, that, that, that uh, monitor there as well, as well as uh, goggles as well that I can put on. I get down to about a foot. Yep. Yep. I now if it's, if it's a windy day, it has a tendency to drop down some, and so I don't like to get too close because then Tim has to walk across the, <laughs> the whole field and pick up his drone. Um, I actually just had a guy uh, decide to land one into a rice field the other day. 
Uh, he lucked out that it didn't get all the way down to the uh, water. Oh. But uh, but again, I'm not I'm not doing this. It's doing its own thing. And all I do is push down to disarm it at that point. Yeah. Hey, yeah, there we go. There you go. <laughs> so we can go up again. Try to get an overall. I think I uh, when I when I came down, it kicked the uh, gimbal a little bit to the side. So I'm gonna bring it down real quick. And you can manually land as well. So you don't have to rely on the uh, autopilot. Should be pretty good now. I think it did it again on me. Let me bring this around. There it goes. And so now we can see everything here. Um, I, I am uh, filming right right now. Yep, yep, it's filming right now. I got 20 minutes of film so far. So, anybody have any uh, questions? Any other questions with this? What this can do? I'm actually surprised somebody hasn't asked to fly yet. So, <laughs> uh, the cost is eight thousand dollars, but that includes a. I don't know who who, who asked that question, but it inc includes a day of training, a year of support, and a everything you possibly could think of and need. Comes with the GoPro, comes with the camera on the back, it comes with a lot. So, $8,000 even. So. Yes, sir. Who owns, you own the data. You know, I'm not sending it off to anybody. You know, or it's, it, it, it's you, it's physically on the craft. You know, you would have to take it off and send it to somebody to change the rights of it so but good question though it's a, it's a pretty big one now anybody have any questions it's going to land again it's kind of a show off so. <laughs> extremely good HD he was he was wondering the uh, quality of the stills one thing to note that this is standard standard definition live feed, but it's recording in HD. So when you can actually come back and put this into the laptop and it is extremely clear, extremely clear. So that's when you can really tell what's going on. Um, there's also a lot of uses beyond ag for these as well. Um, we've been approached about flying over roofs to do roof inspections. Uh, we've been approached by uh, in, in insurance companies about doing farm inventories. You know, where's this barn, where's this barn, where's this barn, and actually creating some type of map for them. Um, crop insurance claims, that's a big one, being able just to go up and see what percentage of crops is down, if there in fact is damage to that crop. I mean, really looking across the field from the ground, it's sometimes hard to get some type of estimate. Uh, but this has the capability of expediting the uh, process. Um, I'm sure there's other uses and things that I haven't even thought of. Marketing as well. Uh, we get approached by some people about just a simple film to put on their website. You know, that, that, that goes a long ways. So 
once you have one, I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit in what you can do. That's a terrible pun, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, there's an extreme amount of uses with them. So that's about it. Anybody have any questions? Uh, you can come and visit me at the booth there. Uh, I'm going to hang around for the farmer panel. I think it's going to be pretty good. And uh, Yes, sir. Nope, the same right that he, you know, he, the, the, the property owner, uh, yeah, the, 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 the question was, does the property owner have any rights from keeping a drone from, front, from flying over top of his property? And they really don't. I mean, because the property owner doesn't have rights from keeping planes from flying over top of their property. Me, personally, I respect people's privacy. So if I'm, far, if I'm flying for a landowner or farmer, and I know part of my mission is going to go over top of a neighbor's land, I'll go talk to that neighbor and make sure he knows what's going on. I also fly in a part of the world where they have shotguns and consider that a target. So I try to be as uh, open and trans transparent as I possibly can be. So, but, um, but that's one thing to think about as well. As these companies begin to uh, offer services and stuff, you want to make sure that they only give you the data for your field. You don't want imagery from somebody else's fields that just happened to be taken when they overlapped. Um, I think that's going to be a pretty big issue that kind of ties into your data privacy question. You know, you, you should only be given the information for what you're looking at, not somebody else's. So, but uh, image stitching is probably the bottleneck currently for aerial mapping. Uh, the live feed system is great, but the aerial mapping part is uh, it's kind of difficult now. You either have to have a really, really good computer um, with expensive software, and we're talking potentially $12,000 software with a four to $6,000 computer in order to process your own images. There's web-based services. Um, I think there's going to be more developing here within the year. Uh, you'll start seeing companies pop up, and I think the pricing is going to be spot on. You're going to be able to upload your pictures, couple hours later you get the aerial map of that field. It's ortho rectified, um, they give you back the, the map, the aerial map, and a topo map as well because one thing that we're able to do since we're taking a picture of multiple points or we're, we're taking multiple pictures of the same point, we're able to detect depth. So from that we're able to create digital elevation models when we map uh, that are pretty darn accurate. Uh, so that's kind of a nicety as well. So, uh, without that, I'm going to make sure this drone is put away just in case we get some weather. So, all right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you.